All right, so uh, we are at the land. We are where the land is, 5,000 acres of land. And then I'm here with Kwame. We're taking a drone shot of the place. Like you can see, he's flying the drone. And we will get you all the videos and pictures that you will need uh, from this pan-African village. Thank you for checking me out. For checking me out so today is monday 2nd of september 2019 i know you've watched the previous videos you have questions that need to be answered but i'm here with a brother uh, an african from the diaspora he's from the united states i call him kwame i don't want to call him his he has his own name he will mention it mm -hmm. but i love okay. to call him kwame kwame welcome to uh, my YouTube. Thank okay you. uh he speaks our language as well so he might be you know mixing it and I have here with me the, I mean, you know him already. You've worked the interview, Obed Aqua. Uh, he's now in charge of the operations, the operations for the Pan-African village. So today I brought Kwame here to, you know, see the land, um, see the people who are concerned with the land issues and project. So he will introduce himself and then we'll take it from there. Shalom, greetings. My name is Ahmad Siyahu Ben Israel. I'm the president of a family of organizations, African Edenic Resettlement Collective, our NGO registered here in Ghana, in Ghana Adema Vezera, which loosely translated means soil and seed, as well as our foundation, New Heaven, New Earth Foundation. All right, and uh, you introduce yourself again. Uh, I'm Obed Kwansa. <coughs> you already know me, Obed. Uh, Either to I was a secretary for the committee, and uh, as as well I couple as the director of operations for the Africa sorry, Asebu Pan African Village project. All right, thank you. So, the whole project Pan African Village is to invite brothers and sisters, you know, from the uh, diaspora, you know, to come home, join us, and then build Africa to the world. So I have some few questions that we're gonna we're gonna go straight to the point. Um, most of you watched the videos that I just posted and then you dropped some questions. So I'll ask him and then Kwame will also, you know, do the other questions as well. So my first question to you, okay, what is the update now? What is the new All right. info we have now concerning the village? Yeah. Thank you, Cos Simpson, for this great job that you're doing. Uh, actually, your YouTube channel is one of the most watched channel I mean <laughs> yeah because uh, it is obvious a lot of people watch your YouTube channel and we are very much grateful yes. for this job that we yes. do very especially thankful. sure very thankful the cheese and people of Asebu you are really selling the agenda of Asebu Pan African Village Project Thank you. Thank you. so much grateful yeah the last time I gave you criteria on how to acquire the land currently we've had government agencies partnering this project so as I speak to you, there's the Coastal Development Authority. The Coastal Development Authority um, is a government agency in charge of social and economic development of the coastal zones. In Ghana, the coastal zones are the Western Region, the Western North Region, Central Region, Greater Accra Region, Volta Region, and the OT Region. You remember hitherto we used to have 10 regions in Ghana, now we have 16 mm -hmm. regions yes, here. Yes, yes. So, the Coastal Development Authority is basically in charge of the development, economic and social, of these coastal zones. And Central Region is part of the coastal regions. And for that matter, Asebu, which is in the Central Region, is also a coastal community because it falls under the coastal region. So this government agency has partnered Asebu Pan-African Village project. 
So what they are going to do is to provide the technical support, engineering ways, the survey ways, every technical support as far as engineering is concerned. They are going to provide that for us. That is a step in the right direction. The first time I spoke with you, they had not come on board, but now they are on board. Uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs have been to this community a couple of times to check documentations, to inspect the land themselves, and get to know that everything is in the right order. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they have to ensure that our brothers and sisters coming from the diaspora do not encounter any sort of problem when they come here. So that is also another step. Um, the entity or the land has now been registered. Okay. Yeah, so it is now a registered entity, a stable Pan-African mm -hmm. village. Uh, we have document to show. Mm -hmm that it has now been registered. So remember the last time I said the processes are ongoing and these are some of the things that so far we've been able to do. We started the development of a website for this project last week and it is almost done. Okay. But the website hasn't been launched. That is why I cannot go ahead and give you it to you. Okay. Thank you very much. So that is the update we have right now. Now Ma, uh, I have a question. Someone is asking, uh, are they limited to only one village, one community? I mean, concerning this land acquisition and all that. You mean one plot per you know, individual? No, I'm saying, are they only limited to Asebu? Can they go to Accra, get a land there and all that? Anyway, uh, we would really wish that all the chiefs in Ghana yeah. would also, I mean, cultivate whatever we are doing yes, here. Yes, yes. Yeah, because it's a way of helping our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Remember, during the launch of Pan Panafest in Cape Coast, mm -hmm. around June yeah. this year, the chief of Asebu, his eminence, Dr. Nana Oketechia Menfi the seventh, the paramount chief of Asebu State, he took the opportunity to apologize on behalf of African chiefs for their role that they played in the slave trade. Mm. So, uh, if the chief took the opportunity to apologize, I mean, this is what he can also do to appease our brothers and sisters mm. for the trauma they passed through some 400 years ago. Mm. You understand? Mm. The trauma that our ancestors passed through some 400 years ago. So, currently, this is what the chief of Asebu State is doing. We would really appreciate it if the chiefs of the other traditional areas in Ghana could same. also do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But for now, if somebody wants to get a land in Accra, I haven't heard of a similar project in Accra. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of a similar project in other part of Ghana. Okay. This is what I know of. Mm -hmm. you, you get it? Yes, so yes. perhaps it tells you that if you want to get a land in Accra, then you go the commercial way. You go mm -hmm. purchase your land, purchase then you follow the processes that have to be followed. If, if they purchase the land and get all this documentation legally, does it give them the chance to also apply for uh, for citizenship to become like total Ghanaian? Sure. The president, His Excellency Nanado Danko Ekufuado, has stated publicly that he's ever ready to grant citizenship to our brothers and sisters in the diaspora okay. who'd come back home. But remember, of course, before a country gives you citizenship, there are processes that Good. one has to follow. Right. So right. if uh, all the processes are followed and it duly comes to bear that you qualify to be given citizenship, why not? The president is ever ready today, tomorrow, to uh, the next day to give you. We attended a program in Accra Maharanda, meaning welcome home. Welcome. Yeah. And uh, there, the director in charge of diaspora affairs, mm. office of the president, made it very clear that the president of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Dodanko Kufado, is ever ready to grant citizenship mm -hmm. to our brothers and sisters yes, uh, yes. who will be coming home. Okay. I actually, so have I actually recently attended one of the, the interviews. So I, I just completed my interview uh, last week for citizenship. So wow. it, it's, it's, it's definitely a process. Exactly. Yeah, the first step was to go and have the preliminary interview. But in time, uh, uh, President Nano Kufuado, he said that he's going to grant citizens to upward of 250 diasporans. So the process is real and it's ongoing. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I will be very glad that after this, we do a one-on-one -on, -one on that. So you, you know, give the people the process 
you went through to sure. you know, get to where you are right now. Sure. So, a lot of my training is in the areas of sustainable development. And I represent uh, a group of brothers and sisters whereby we're working together to create a self-sustaining community. Uh, a lot of people might be familiar with what's called intentional communities. And uh, so one of the questions that I have today is, can a group of diasporans build a self-sustaining community collectively within the Pan-African village? Sure. Um, if a group of diasporans want to build a self-sustaining community, it means that uh, we just have to allocate some piece of land to the group for them to get their self-sustaining community. Mm -hmm. But remember, it will still be under the Pan-African village. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Okay, and uh, my second question is, can a self-sustaining community have industry on or within the allotted land? Thank you. Um, our first interview, I made viewers aware that there's a land for commercial purpose and there's a land for industrial purposes. That is what we call the industrial park. So it depends on the kind of industry that you want to bring on board. We look at the nature of the industry and the acreage of land that will be needed for the industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he, the, the, the size of land is okay to be on the Pan-African village, mm -hmm. why not? We'll just give you the opportunity to go mm -hmm. ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it is very, if it is very vast and huge, mm -hmm. that calls for huge acres of land, then we need to take you to the commercial land mm -hmm. for you to get it done over mm -hmm. there. Okay, yeah. okay, excellent. Uh, my next question, and, and you and I, we spoke briefly about yeah. this, and uh, it, it's good that um, a lot more transparency is offered in, yeah. in terms of the nature of the question. So the question is, can a self-sustaining community develop its own bylaws for governance and can the institutions be considered private? And I want to preface by saying that in our conversation, it, it was shared that there's already culture in a Cebu, as there is culture all throughout Africa. So for diasporans coming back home to Africa, there's need for us to respect and yeah. honor the existing <clears throat> culture. And there's so much diversity in Africa that it's good to become and make oneself aware of that diversity. So when I say bylaws, for instance, the community of which I'm a part of, the African Hebrew Israelites, this is a vegan, a vegetarian also community whereby we consume, uh, we don't consume animal byproducts. So for the self-sustaining community that those that I represent seek to develop, one of our bylaws, one of our rules, the things that we would encourage for those to participate in is in a vegan nutrition. So if a Cebu has its standing culture, our goal would be to draw up our bylaws and submit them for approval through the Pan-African Village Council. So can a self-sustaining community draw up their bylaws their particular cultural practices and submit these to the Pan-African Village Committee? Uh, thank you. I believe uh, if you really explained the question very well. Like you rightly said, all you have to do is to get all these laws documented on paper, you submit it to the council, headed by the Paramount Chief, his ex sorry, His Royal Majesty, uh, Nana Dr. Kitechi Amenfi the Servant. If the council gets the laws, and I mean, if there are no laws that will go a longer way of harming the people of Aksebu, when I say harming, if there are no laws that will end up destroying our culture, mm. we wouldn't have any problem with it. We keep saying, and it is part of the documentation process when you fill in the forms, that you should have in mind that the people of Aksebu have our own culture, we respect our culture, and we expect that when you come and stay with us, you would equally respect our culture. Mm. So when your laws frown upon our culture, mm. you understand, when your laws frown upon our culture, of course the chiefs wouldn't allow you to introduce something quote unquote alien. Yes, yes. You understand? Yes. But if, I mean, if you bring a law that, oh, for us in this community, in this self-sustaining community, we wouldn't take animal byproducts, this isn't anything that will harm mm, anybody. Right, right, so like right. you said, when it is submitted to the council, 
the council will scrutinize for approval. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. And the second part of that question is, uh, can the institutions that are developed by a self-sustaining community or any community, any development project for that matter, can they be considered private institutions? For instance, um, uh, many of my family here uh, attend a private school. So there's a process whereby if a student, a parent would desire to have their student enrolled in that school, they would fill out applications to be approved for. So for any uh, development within the Pan-African Village, can those developers, can those communities uh, develop institutions whereby they're considered private? However, not private to the extent that the goal is not to share in whatever those institutions produce or the services they, that they provide, but can they essentially be cons registered as private institutions? Sure, uh, Kwame, uh, this is business, <laughs> you understand. So if you come to the community and for instance, you want to establish your basic school over there, that basic school belongs to you. It's a private institution, so it is highly considered private. However, I mean, the, the uh, Ghana, the Republic of Ghana, we have our education ministry, we have the Ghana education sector, so we wouldn't probably expect you to be teaching the case something that will go contrary to what the ministry approves. You a understand? Alien. Yeah, it's, it's alien. <laughs> Let me use the word alien again. But aside yeah. that, I mean, you can have institutions that are private. Yeah, if you yeah. come to establish your mall, your shopping mall in the community, it's yours. Mm. It is private. Mm. You understand? Uh, yes. The yes. most important thing is that at the end of the day, we hope that uh, you're going to recruit and employ people, some people from the community, yes. so that at the end of the day, they can also get some job yes, to do. Yes. I mean, are there bodies of water on the 5,000 acres? Yeah, thank you. Um, the land is divided into phases. The first interview I made, I made viewers aware of this. We have phase one, phase two, phase three, okay? Yes, yes. And the good aspect of it all is that all residential lands are closer to the community. Mm. So it is easier getting pipe bone water, it is easier getting electricity, it is easier getting these basic infrastructure amenities on the site. Yes. Yeah.